When I first bought my house, I wish that someone would have taught me the different types of insurance that they offer and what I was looking for. Because when I purchased the home insurance, I just followed the natural flow. So when referred another person, I bought insurance from them, and then I just kind of crossed my fingers and hoped it worked out. Today's video, we're gonna go through the top five things you need to know about house insurance. Hey guys, this is Mark Flockhart. If you're new here, this channel is all about home, auto, all types of insurance, and how you guys can learn the tips and tricks of how to get you the best rates on your insurance. So if that's interesting to you, it might be a good idea to subscribe. I will also put in the notes below a lot of the stuff we're talking about today, so that way you can read it as well. Uh, if you wanna read it just in write, written form, I'm trying to start a blog. I'm just kind of created a website that I've started using. Uh, so it's kind of a, a tool for you guys to use. Hopefully it's helpful. If you do get good uh, value out of it, definitely let me know. And if you have other things you want me to talk about, please leave that in the comments below as well. According to the National Association of Insurance Commissioners, the average cost in house insurance is $1,192 per year. Keep in mind the prices do vary from state to state because if you're in Kansas or Florida or Texas or Louisiana, you guys are the highest in the nation. So your averages are gonna be about three to $500 per year more than the national average. So you're looking anywhere from $1,500 per year up to about to almost $2,000 per year for house insurance. Now those states, even though they're the high, you will find some people there that are only paying six or $700 a year. It really just depends on the location. For example, I am living in Michigan and my average is about $1,200 per year. We're pretty normal as far as the home insurance goes, <laughs> not so much on the auto, but as far as that goes, we're great. But I have people I insure that are $600, $400, $800. It's not uncommon to be around that $900 range, even though the typical home is right around that $1,100 to $1,200 range. Location plays a huge factor. Being in the city versus being in the country, you would think that the city's more expensive. And there are some factors if you're in a high risk area, so the zip code has like a lot of theft and stuff like that, you're gonna have some stuff there but that's kind of a separate piece. Theft and, and all those claims are more so not really the, the amount of activity, but it's more whether you've claimed that stuff, right? If you're in the country, you're likely gonna pay a little bit higher of a premium. The reason that is is because you guys are gonna have less of a, a response time for any fire claims, and that's a huge thing. So if the fire station is over here near the city, you're off in the country, house starts on fire, you call them, help me, help me, help me, by the time they get there, half of your house or all of your house has already burnt down. We're in the city, they're near everybody. Within 10 minutes, they're at your house, they put the fire out, and maybe the kitchen burnt up a little bit. You're talking about a $10,000 claim versus a $150,000 claim. There's a huge difference. So that is gonna play a very large factor. The age of the home makes a big difference. The older the house is, the riskier it is. Because the updates, no one's gonna dig up the plumbing and change it. Some people do, there is a discount for that but that's not common, right? If you have a house that's built in 1968, that's gonna naturally pull in a higher cost than a house built in 1998. Your deductible plays a very, very large piece. Now I prefer to stay with the common, which the most common deductible that you're gonna see is $1,000. So if you have a house claim, you out of pocket 1,000, your insurance will pick up the rest if that's a covered peril, as they call it. There's two pieces of the deductible. You have their all perils, which covers pretty much everything except for wind and hail. So it's like fire, uh, vandalism, theft, any of those typical things that's gonna happen. You know, your house burns down tomorrow, that's an all peril deductible. And then you have wind and hail deductible, which is usually wind and hail. That's the roof, basically. It covers the siding, but it's very rare that the siding is really the part that got damaged. So if there's a huge thunderstorm that comes through, hail dropping everywhere, you can actually pick a large deductible on either or. Most commonly, you're not gonna be able to pick a large deductible on the all perils unless your wind and hail deductible matches that or is higher. So you're not gonna be able to do like a 5,000 all peril deductible and a 1,000 wind and hail. It's not common. Most companies will actually deny that type of a deductible. If you did a $1,000 deductible on your all peril deductible, then you could probably put your wind and hail at 2,500, 
5,000, even 10,000, a lot of companies offer. Should you do it? Probably not. Most of the time, that $1,200 average range, if you're comfortable with that, that's gonna be a $1,000 deductible on average. That's the most common thing that people do. But just know if you're trying to close on a house and they're just saying, we need to get the insurance down because we need to show that your, uh, your mortgage needs to show that you have more debt to income. Your mortgage person is gonna come to me and say, how do we get this insurance down then that's our first option. I would rather not lower your coverages because I don't want to underinsure you. I'd rather just have a larger deductible. So I'm not going to lower the house from a $200,000 house down to 150 because if it burns it down tomorrow, I want it covered. I'd rather have you out of pocket $10,000 versus losing $100,000. There's a big difference. Same thing with liability. I'd rather not have you at a 300,000 liability when you were 500 because we needed to get the price down, rather raise that deductible so that the price lowers. And then if it's for a closing, yeah, sure, if you need to close it and you choose to put it back up the next day, the next month, whenever, you can change those coverages like you do in car insurance. So you could get that price, close on the house, and then if you change your mind and decide, you know what, I really am not comfortable with that, I'd rather have that larger deductible, you can raise that. Typically, your mortgage will pay the difference, but just keep in mind, they may ask you to pay the difference. Your credit history pays a factor in this. So if you have good credit, just like your mortgage loan, you're gonna get a better or lower interest rate. Same thing with insurance. In most states, they allow credit to be a factor. So if you have really bad credit, you're gonna have a higher cost on your insurance, good credit, lower cost. Now this, it doesn't really play as big of a factor as people think where auto insurance is different. In auto insurance, because it's so risky, your credit, you're more likely to walk away from your car than you will walk away from your house. That brings us to our second point, which is understanding the values or the coverages, so to speak. There's really only a few different coverages that are primary coverages in your home policy. You have coverage A, B, C, D, E, and F. What are those? You've got coverage A, that's your dwelling. That's the physical house. The cost to rebuild that house, to rip it down, take all the stuff away, that's that's removing everything, and then to build that same exact house, how much is that gonna cost? Keep in mind, it's not the value of the house. The value of the house includes the land, the location, all the features that they've put into it. Sure, you're gonna get those rebuilt, but the cost to rebuild them is sometimes more expensive than the cost to buy them today. So that's one thing to be mindful of. Coverage B is gonna be other structures. So that's gonna be if you have a shed in the backyard, if you have a fence around the house, if there's a pool not attached to the house, anything that's disconnected from the house, that's gonna be your coverage B. Coverage C is going to be your actual property damage. So the actual stuff you want, my shoes, my couch, my TV. The one thing that you always, always, always wanna make sure that you get with that is something called replacement cost. And what that is, is it basically means that no matter how old the TV is, how old the couch is, how old anything is, you're gonna get full value. That doesn't mean you're gonna get the full value that you paid for it, it means you're gonna get what today's value is. So you may have bought a TV for $1,000 five years ago, that TV's probably worth $200 today. So if you don't get full replacement cost, you're only gonna get $200 back if you have a fire. Imagine that times your whole house. Take 80% of what you own and you're only getting 20 to 30% back. That's crazy. It's not worth it and it's not expensive to do full replacement cost. Full replacement cost is going to mean if that TV was $1,000 five years ago, it's probably the prices have gone down on TVs a little bit. So you, it's probably only $800 or $600 in the store today, but it's a lot better than getting a $200 cash back. You're going to have enough to buy that exact replacement model of that TV. Same thing with your couch. If it's a 10 year old couch, you paid $1,500 for it. it Non-replacement cost, it's only gonna give you a 50 to $100 back, where full replacement cost is probably gonna give you anywhere from 800 up to the 1500. If it was 3000 today, then you're gonna get the $3,000 back. It's full replacement cost. Coverage D is loss of use. So it's what it means, loss of use. <laughs> If you, let's say you have a $30,000 claim and it's in your kitchen, right? The kitchen caught fire. It's going to take three months to replace that. So you have to get moved out of the house or you have to live in the house if you choose to while they're remodeling that kitchen. What that's going to do is that's going to pay any living expenses that you incur because of that loss. 
So if you have to go rent another house, similar size and shape, and it's $1,500 a month, then that's part of that living expense. It's gonna pay that bill. If you have to pay someone to come over and mow the lawn because you can't do it anymore, because uh, you just can't get back to the house between the distance of your rental and work and all that, if you can't uh, cook up the food like you used to for the next week or month and a half, then you have to, they're gonna cover those living expenses that you incur. So that way you're not gonna actually pay out of pocket all of these extra pieces, it's covered with that policy. Normally, they're gonna give you quite a bit. It's usually 20, 30, even $50,000 for that coverage, which doesn't seem like a lot, especially if your house is like a two hundred dollars or $300,000 house. But think about it. If you had, let's just say $36,000, and it took your, your rebuild of your house 12 months, which it never should, but let's just say it did, right? took you 12 months, that's $3,000 a month to live off of, 12, 24, 36,000 per year, and so, or total. If it took you 12 months to do that, that's usually enough. In most cases, that coverage is gonna cover roughly about 5,000 on average per month, and you're never gonna use that. So just know that coverage, it doesn't have to be high. Uh, it's really mostly defaulted. So then coverage E is going to be personal liability. That's if somebody's gonna sue you for any reason, anything you're liable for. The easiest way to think of it is it's not only inside your house, it's actually outside of your house as well. So if you're at the zoo and you drop the elka seltzer in the monkey cage, right? And he eats it and he dies, they're gonna sue you because they're, they're gonna want that monkey to either have all the medical bills paid for or replace him to go purchase another one that's $300,000 to ship them and all that stuff. So that's gonna go up towards your home liability. If you have a friend over and they trip down the stairs and they get hurt and it's, $50,000 worth of medical and your medical payments, that's the next coverage coming up, doesn't pay enough of that, which it won't. They're gonna have to sue you. They're gonna sue your insurance, not you. That's the reason you have the insurance is they're likely gonna go after that liability. Now keep in mind if you have more assets, so I own a Ferrari and I have a really nice a million dollar house and it's paid for, you should be looking at a lot higher than a half a million dollar liability. You will probably max it out at a million and then you'll get something called an umbrella, which is 1 million, 2 million, up to 10 million even, and it can go higher, but then you're getting into more specialized companies. Last piece is coverage F, which is your medical payments or medical coverage. It doesn't cover you or direct family that live in the house. So it's more so if like friends or family are over for a, a visit and they get injured. They fall down the steps, break an arm, it's $4,000 for their deductible through their medical, and that medical that you've chosen, let's say you chose 5,000 as your coverage, is gonna cover that bill so they don't have to sue you. They don't have to sue your insurance. Uh, it's basically paying for a reason for them not to have to go after you. What coverage should you carry? This is so, so simple for you to calculate. The average across the US, some states are a little bit less, and then yes, if you have a really nice home and you have special features, crown molding everywhere, granite countertops, really upgraded stuff, it's gonna be more. But typically, the, ease of, the easy way to calculate it is take the square footage, so we'll say a 2,000 square foot house, multiply it by, by about 150 to $160. We'll use 150 in most examples. $300,000 to insure a 2,000 square foot house. Now, if it's a brick home, that's a different type of material, so that's gonna take longer to rebuild, and that's a lot more labor intensive. So something like that, you're gonna to wanna to do closer to like 160 to 180 per square foot as far as calculating that. And that's the major things companies look at, is how large of a house is it, square footage that's above ground. So if you walk in the front door, if you have a basement that walks out, that's not above ground, so that doesn't count for square footage. It's anything that's above ground, and that's the square footage that they're gonna base it off of. Take note of everything that you have. So do you have specialized stuff in your house, like built-in cabinets, built-in bookcases, you got jacuzzi tubs, you got speakers in the ceiling. Those are all additional pieces that aren't typically calculated in it, unless you are gonna speak up and say something. If your agent's smart, they're gonna pull up your house on Zillow or online, and if there's photos, they'll kind of browse through them and make sure that they're not missing pieces. So we've got our value. So our 2,000 square foot house is $300,000 for dwelling A, okay, the coverage. Separate structures, depending on the company, is either two or 10%. More often, it's 10%. It's gonna be 30,000 for the shed and the fence and all that. Now you can raise that uh, if you want, so that's not gonna make a big deal. 
but if you have like a pole bar in the back, you're going to want to notate that and then raise that coverage B up to a higher amount, the 60 or 70,000 that it costs to rebuild that pole barn. Personal property, it's always ridiculously high. Don't bother with this coverage. It's gonna be 150, dollars $200,000, it's crazy. But if you lower it, nine times out of 10, it doesn't even change the price. So let it be as high as it wants. Just make sure you have enough to cover your personal belonging. Loss of use, same situation. Usually defaults a little bit higher than average. Not a big price changer, so there's no point even playing with this coverage. Just make sure you have enough that you could live on for at least three to six months if something did happen and you had to move out of the house. Medical payments, more often than not, we're gonna do 5,000. If you have some extra money and you don't mind having a little bit larger policy, then sure, 10,000 may be good. Uh, but usually it stops right around that $10,000 range, mainly because the next part is gonna be the liability portion. Nine times out of 10, I quote 500,000 liability. I just want you to be protected as well as possible. If you have a lower income, a little bit less of a house, then sure, you can bump down to 300,000 liability as long as you have enough less assets than what they're gonna go after you for. So that way they'll go after the insurance and not you. If you have more, like I mentioned earlier, then make sure you go higher up to a million. But more often than not, you're gonna keep that 500,000 liability and then you're just gonna add an umbrella on top of that because the umbrella is gonna give you the million, two million, three million dollar coverage, and it's not gonna stop at the house. It's gonna cover your auto liability, your car, your home liability, anything that you're doing, it's gonna umbrella, that's why it's called an umbrella. It's gonna overcover all of your assets. That way, if something happens, it's cheaper to buy that than it is to up the home, and then something happens outside of the home where it's not tied to that, and then the umbrella kicks in, and that's gonna give you a better benefit. The third piece, I hope you're staying with me. If this is too much, let me know. I can make this into multiple videos. Uh, I am gonna go in depth with some computer screenshots of some Zillow things and show you different types of houses in one of the next videos. Otherwise, the third piece is don't accept the referral. And what that means is when you go and purchase a house, your realtor is gonna refer you to an insurance person. Your mortgage person is gonna refer you to an insurance person. And I wanna kind of preface this because I told my wife this and she's like, what? you get referrals from them all the time. I'm like, yes, I know. But the reason I'm saying that is I'm, I'm really more so saying do some research on the back end. More often than not, a person will get a referral from the realtor because they trust them. And that realtor sometimes works with a really good, more, a really good insurance person. But a lot of the times they're all just trying to build a network where I'll give you a lead and you give me a lead. And a lot of the times or half of the time I would say, they don't really know that person. They're just given the referral because they're really nice. They had a really good meeting with them, maybe once, maybe twice. They might have just become Facebook friends and that guy brings me donuts every month, right? That's really the, the thing about referrals. You gotta do some research. That way you're not gonna just jump in because I'll tell you straight up, seven out of 10 people, when I get a referral, purchase. That's the numbers. The more referrals that you get, the higher converting they are, is because you're not gonna worry about shopping everywhere. You're just gonna go to that one person. If the price sounded okay, or if you're really close to the time you had to close on the house, then you got stuck. You bought that policy, and a couple years later, you may think about it like, wait, did I make the right move? So do a little bit of research. Maybe Google the person or Google their company and just see what kind of reviews they have. And that kind of leads me into the fourth point, which is do your own research. This doesn't have to be a 30, 40, 50 hour long thing of you doing research. Pull up a Zillow listing or a Redfin listing on your house. Look at the square footage, take the value. You can, really li you can literally do this on a piece of paper. Take the square footage times 150 and then 10% for separate structures. X percent for this, X percent for that. And you can literally just write down what it should be as far as the coverages go. And then you can check a couple different places. What I typically do is because I work with an agency that checks up to 17 different places. So when you call me, that's one of the reasons we have a lot higher of a conversion is because when I'm checking it, I'm telling you AAA and Progressive and Citizens and all those guys, Westfield and, and all the major carriers and I'm gonna be able to just show you the differences and let you kind of decide what's the best fit for you. Okay, well, AAA doesn't care about the pit bull in this state, but Progressive does. So we know Progressive's not the option for you. You have a pool, AAA doesn't care about the pool. Westfield doesn't care about the pool. Well, they rate for them, they may have an extra charge, but then when you go to those other companies, some companies don't want any pools. So you join a company 
they send an inspector out and all of a sudden you're dealing with a cancellation. <laughs> so doing a little bit of research in the background, knowing your coverages, it's a really good thing to have. I'll try to create a cheat sheet for you and I'll put a link below. That way you can go right to my website and then you can download that copy. That way you'll have an idea of what you're looking for. With that being said, the last part is gonna be the bundle discussion. Mark, don't, no, 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 don't leave. Don't leave yet, don't leave, please. I wanna tell you, it's so important, bundle. <laughs> okay. The first thing a lot of you probably thought of just now was like, no, you're trying to sell me out a bundle. I'm not doing bundles, right? I like my guy who does my auto. I like my guy to do the house. I'm just gonna do whatever, da, da. Okay, I get that. Here's what I'm saying. If you love the guy that does your auto, turn this video off now. Go talk to him about your house. Bundle your house and your auto no matter what is best for you. If you are shopping for home insurance and you don't call the guy that does your auto if you like him or her, then you're doing them a disservice more than you would by saying no to other people. Put your house with them. If it's a hundred bucks more and you really think they're a good fit for you, pay the extra hundred dollars. It is worth it to have the right agent that will stand beside you when you have a claim. So having someone that can fight for you in a battle like that, especially if you have a house fire, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar claim, if your agent knows what they're doing, knows what coverages they gave you and is willing to take the extra 20 minutes out of their day to fight for you, then you know you got a good one. Pay the extra $100 to be with that person. It is worth it. I'm telling you right now. With that being said, the bundle saves you 20 to 30% off home and auto. So take whatever you're paying on your auto and knock off 15%, 20% or whatever that company's discount is. That's huge. So you're going to save money there and here. It's worth it no matter which way you go. It's a bonus round. All right, we made it. <laughs> I just punched you in the face. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to go over the most important things that a lot of you want to hear. Discounts. I'm going to rattle through some discounts that I think you guys should be mindful of. And don't worry about writing them down right now. I'm going to put them in the description below. First time home buyer. If you're a first time home buyer, you usually will get a discount. There are some companies out there that I've worked with that give hundreds of dollars off if you're a first time home buyer. Updating the roof. That's huge. If you have a new roof, you're gonna to have to prove or get documentation showing that the roof is new, but it's gonna help a lot. If you've updated the electrical, the plumbing, the heater, all of that stuff matters. Going paperless, also paying in full. Those are two discounts that just have to do with the billing. If you actually pay the bill yourself, sometimes they give a discount for that versus going through the mortgage because they're submitting all the paperwork and dealing with the mortgage company. So it's more of a service and you're paying for that extra service. Being part of an affinity group. So that means you're part of a credit union, you're part of a AAA membership, or you have uh, a RV membership club or Harley Davidson membership club. Any of those things, there's a whole bunch of them will give you a discount for that. Now keep in mind, you don't have to necessarily know what they are now. So when you get the price from your agent, ask them, is there any additional affinity groups that I can be part of that will give me an additional discount? Having high credit, like we said before, credit matters. So if you have really good credit, they're gonna give you a little bit better of a deal. Doing an early shopper, a little bit. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Being a non-smoker, not just you, it's anyone in the house. So if there's four people in the house, if none of them smoke, they're gonna give you a discount for that mainly because it's a lower risk. There's less chance of a fire. Having a security system, especially one that notifies the police. So if it's a central security system and there's gonna be an alarm going off when someone tried to break in the house, they smash the window and there's sensors that go off because of that. If you have one that notifies the police station, that's gonna give you more of a discount. Same thing with fire. So if you have a fire extinguisher, you're gonna get a discount for that. But also if you have a fire alarm system that either one notifies, sends an alarm out, wee woo, wee woo, and so that's going off, right? That's, that's a discount. If it notifies the fire station, that's another discount. Quicker response time, they're gonna get to the house quicker versus the half hour later where half the house is gone. Tying into that is something called smart devices. So if you have a smart home where your thermostat connects to your cell phone, a ring doorbell where it has a camera on it, you have the central fire alarm system where it notifies them, you got the central. I mean, having those things are gonna be a high safety feature and that's gonna give you a lower price on the cost. And the last major one is having a hail resistant roof. If you have a hail resistant roof, that makes a huge difference with insurance. If you're in states like Pennsylvania and anywhere near the coast, 
Uh, they also give one for having uh, hail resistant shutters, so storm shutters. That way they're going to close off the glass if hail comes through or wind comes through and it's going to protect the home. Essentially the more stuff features that you have that are going to protect your house are going to be beneficial. Anyways guys, if you are interested and don't have a specific agent that you love, if you love them, this is my agent, end the video, give me the thumbs up, have a great time. If you don't have that agent, he's just not pulling your heartstrings <laughs> or she's just not doing, you're not sure if they're doing the right thing, right? I will put a link in the description below. That way, if you are interested in getting a quote, uh, typically right now what it does is it comes directly to me. So it may take a day for us to respond. But what it does is I'll take that information and I'll look at it or pass it on to one of my guys and they'll actually work up quotes for you. <laughs> Either way, don't forget to smash the like button. Share the video with anyone that you know is buying a house. If they are buying a house, they need to see this. This could save them several hundred dollars a year on their insurance. And it's definitely worth it just to give them the advice just so that they know what they're walking into. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.